remember hearing stories about witches. Is it true what they say? Elves are the original sorcerers of the continent. When humans and monsters arrived, elves taught the humans how to turn chaos into magic. And then the humans slaughtered them. Chaos is the most dangerous thing in this world. But without control, chaos will kill you. So that's all life is to you? Monsters and money. It's all it needs to be. Something out there waits for you. This child will be extraordinary. Yennefer, imagine the most powerful woman in the world. Do you have what it takes? You've got her here. She's why they came. Run destiny just because you're terrified of it. It's coming. Find Geralt of Rivia. I can't do this without you. No matter what you choose, you'll come out bloody. In a little while, we'll have the cast and showrunner of The Witcher joining us. But right now, here are some of IGN's biggest Witcher fans, Max Scoville, David Griffin, and Nick Lamone. You guys are hilarious. Literally, you're like, well, in this part of the books, there was like this and that, and oh my goodness. And I just absolutely love hearing about it. So tell me initial reactions. How do you guys feel about the trailer? I mean, just look at what that was. That was so good. It was so good. We saw the monsters. Yeah. We saw the sword fighting. We saw magic. But most importantly, I think we saw a mature adaptation of obviously mature stories, but in a way that does justice to the source material. Yeah. And I think that's something that's going to put Witcher fans at ease after they get a glimpse of this. So I've played Witcher 3. And I thought I knew about this stuff. And then I hear you guys talking about novels and all these different spin-offs. Um, so do you guys think that this looks accurate to the books or more to the games? What's your feeling? Yeah, because we're, we're going back. I mean, yeah, The Witcher 3, I've played it like two or three times through. It's great. But you're getting a yeah. much older Siri. Here you're seeing a much younger Siri. We're going back to that melding of that relationship. There's a lot of talk about destiny and what's to come. And Geralt, you can't just be a monster hunter anymore. There's more to life than that. So, I mean, we're getting the, the big Witcher story here. We're starting not at the beginning, but at the very early stage as well before The Witcher 3. So I'm, I can't wait to see this. I mean, that's Geralt. Henry Cavill's Geralt. Yeah. I think obviously there's going to be a lot of people comparing this to existing versions. I, you know, mostly the game. I think mm -hmm. maybe there's like one guy out there who's comparing it to like the direct-to-TV Polish miniseries. The Hexer. Hexer. The, yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> um, but no, like this is a weird scenario to be in where we're looking at a brand new, you know, multi-million dollar TV show yeah. and we're being like, yeah, but it, is it is it going to be as good as the game? You know, like it, usually it's the other way around, where like they make a video game that's a tie into a thing that was already a TV show. You know, it's like this is an odd direction for sort of adaptations to go. And also, again, this isn't a show based on a video game. This is based on books that happen to already have a really good video game based on them. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to see what they do with it. I think it's I think the, the the best thing we can do is to try to give a little bit of distance to it being an adaptation, mm -hmm. and to let it exist as its own interpretation of The Witcher. What do you guys think about the format? It's going to be eight episodes, it's not a movie. Uh, do you guys think that's enough room for the story? Do you have concerns about that? I, honestly, I think that's enough to tackle the first collection of short stories, The Last Wish. And I think that this is gonna combine The Last Witch, or The Last Wish with, uh, I think, the beginning of the novel saga in a way that, because like we saw a scene, there's a dinner party happening and that's when the uh, a magic user sends everyone flying. That's actually Siri's mother. Her name is, uh, I believe it's Pavetta, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, basically Siri does not exist at that point in the story. That's where we find out that she's pregnant with Siri. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have Siri already, like we've seen her in the footage, lets me believe that we're gonna have some cross cutting between the past and the present and uh, see some really cool interactions between the two parallel times. Yeah, that's a big thing to remember because they couldn't, if they started, if they started with the first, the last wish, the first collection of short stories, Siri's not a big part of that. So they had to bring her in early, you know, and I think this is a clever way to do that. Have her story off to the side. She's probably not gonna be with Geralt for a while, I'm guessing. 
and then bring her in later. So we get to see her develop on her own away from Geralt and away from Yennefer. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about this before we started. Uh, but we were talking about the Kikimora, which is the big monster yeah. you see yeah. at the end there. Uh, in The Last Wish, you never, it doesn't actually ever talk about Geralt fighting it. It talks about him immediately after he's killed it. And right? no one wants to pay for it. Right? Because they're like, oh, well, we've killed like 40 Kikimora, so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but also, like, I love that because in the, in, the, in the book, they describe it as being like, it's like an alligator head with spider legs, kind of. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he puts it over the back of his horse like it's just a dead body. And in that one, it's like, oh, no, that's like a boss no, fight. No, it's huge. Yeah. It's a monster. Yeah. yeah. So, like, clearly, they're showing us stuff that hasn't really been shown before. Yeah. And most importantly, that actually sets up, like, the Kikimora setup is the setup for the Blaviken storyline. That's where we see an adaptation of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And also, we find out how Geralt gets the nickname, the Butcher of Blaviken. Yeah. Spoilers, it doesn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you were talking about some of the other monsters that you saw that you thought were hinting to some possible Yeah, we got lines. a quick glimpse of uh, Geralt in the crypt mm -hmm. of a castle, and that is the uh, Foltest Castle. And basically someone cursed his daughter because he had an incestuous relationship. And so that monster that we see in the crypt is the Striga. And the Striga basically, instead of fighting it, you kind of have to like subdue it and like lay in a coffin with it. It's really weird, but yeah, there's a Striga there. And then we also saw um, the urchin. Uh, he's, a, he's like a, a monster prince who basically says, hey, I'm actually the rightful heir to Sintra. That's the dinner party scene. And so uh, he kind of goes up and lays claim to the throne. And when that all happens, uh, chaos breaks out because there's no way I'm marrying my daughter off to a, a, a monster. Then we see how things work out. Yeah. Okay, is it gonna break the curse? Video game adaptations. Well, that's the, we, uh, that's the trick. The is it, it's not technically, everyone's, everyone's gonna compare it to the well, video game. Because we have the books. Which is right? like, okay. which is such a weird situation to be in. We're so yeah. used to there being like, oh, they made a movie based on this video game and yeah. it's not great. So, but and this case, it's not. Yeah, but I think this is the right place. I think with movies, you never have the room to explore the, the, the mythology of the video game that we're watching. So I think with the TV series, you know, we're going to get Halo down the road for Showtime. You have multiple episodes, multiple hours to really dive deep. So I, I think this is going to, this could break the curse. I, I think we're going to see first and foremost, the most important thing in an adaptation is not how authentic it is to the source material, but just first and foremost, telling a good story with story, character, and theme and that transcends any medium. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks so much. Well, David <laughs> and Nick actually took a trip to Hungary earlier this year to visit the Witcher set, and they got an exclusive video featuring one of the most recognizable characters from the Witcher universe. That's coming up in just a minute, but first, a short break. <laughs> 